Hi, this is Ricochet. Um, today I'm going to make a 3D sound player or jukebox. The benefit of this is that you can then have it hooked up to a laptop or you could have it hooked up to a vehicle or you could you know, have it hooked up to a radio. Any, any object where you want the sound to appear to be coming from a specific source. In order to do this, um, I've set up a couple of laptops here. The laptop in question that we're concerned with is the middle one. You'll notice that there's a little helipad, which I've called Virtual Player 2. The reason for this is that with 3D sound, uh, specifically say 3D, you cannot stop the sound whilst it's playing. The only way to do that is to attach the sound to an object and then delete the object or set the damage to, of the object to damage 1. So in this case, I'm going to be using uh, an invisible helipad which I've mounted on the keyboard as close as possible to the center of this object in 3D space as you can see so on the on the laptop which I've called laptop 2 for the sake of this uh, demo there are three add actions if you want to put a custom texture on the laptop it's um, simple you just use uh, this set Glo object texture global and then you basically put a zero in which is the layer and then you you put in your path to your file in this case it's a jpeg file and the ratio is basically hd ratio so 192 by 108 kind of scaled down to obviously a small image okay so the first add action is and this is how you get um, i'll show you the process just now um, I've got little images on each of the add actions. So I've got a nice little play button. So you'll see there's an image tag here. It references a little tiny play.paa image file in the images folder with a little bit of text. And then when you click on this add action, you get it runs the script and it passes this variable to the script and uh, with a priority of nine. The next add action is next.paa where the heading next has got a little, little image runs the same script jukebox and passes next to the script uh, the priority of eight. So it's, it's, these are all in sequence. The last one is stop, stop, same script with a slightly lower priority. So I'm going to show you how it works and then I'll show you the script and how, how it was done. Right, so let's get rid of that light to start off with. Alright, so <clears throat> if you look at the laptop, you see you've got a nice little icons, play, next and stop. In the top right you see it tells you the song that's playing. Had a bit of a water leak there. Okay, great ending. So now this will carry on playing throughout the sequence of ten songs.
toilet must have been running. So I'm going to skip to the next song. Obviously, I'm limited by the type of music I'm allowed to play on YouTube, so um, you have to excuse some of the choices. Some of those beautiful music, obviously. Yeah. Alright, so I'll show you how that was done. Okay, I'm assuming that you have created a PAA file, but if not, I'll show you how to do it. You fire up Armour 3 Tools. If you don't know, if you don't have tools installed, just go down to Library, go down to Install, go to Tools. You'll find Armour 3 Tools, install them. And once they're installed, start them up. In here, you get Image to PAA. And what you do is you create an image these images are 256 I think yeah 256 by 256 there must be multiples of 64 so 64 128 256 so on. and then in this case I've got a transparency around the the button so you dump the PA the PNG file because PNG has got a transparency layer dump it into your image to PAA Dump it in here. Let's drag and drop it. Click process files and out will pop your image, your 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 file. Alright, so now let's look at the script. To use the script, you would put these three add actions on the object. A vehicle, laptop, radio, whatever. Okay, and in order for this to work, all the songs have to be within the same sort of length of, of each other, which is not really an issue. I think one and a half minutes on average per song in Armour 3 would be fine because uh, obviously you want to keep the mission size down to a minimum. And also um, with, a, with a one and a half minute length, you can do a nice fade out, not like I did with some of my songs, just fade it out uh, and, and then keep them within a, a nice manageable length. Don't have one song that's like 30 seconds shorter than the other because you're going to have a long delay between some songs. Okay, so you create a description.ext file, which I think you probably would know how to do. It's a basically it's a pure text file. You go into Notepad and you create a class CFG sounds. And then for each song, you basically you go and put in the name of the song that you're going to be playing. This is the name that will be used in the uh, in the script and also this the name of the song that's passed to the player so it's very important you don't get spelling mistakes between here and here so just copy and paste so you put a path into the file it's an og file og vorbis that's the volume and then basically there's about 10 songs here so you can just put put your songs in then copy and paste them into here make sure there's a separator with a comma except for the last one and don't delete the brackets because this basically these songs are an array called tunes to play 
Okay, so then what it does is it says how many tunes are there. So number of tunes, count tunes to play. So it counts through here and it says, oh yes. Basically it uses the comma separator to work out where the song begins and ends. And it says, who the, where's the jukebox? The jukebox is this select zero. In other words, the object that this uh, add action was attached to. Then uh, it gets action ID. I'm not even, I'm not using this at this point. It's useful if you want to delete. If you want to delete the add action once it's been run, you can reference it because it gets a unique ID. So then it checks the state of this, uh, the state that's passed from the add action. In this case, each of these add actions passes a different state. So this first one sends the word play to the script. So it sends next, that one sends it off. Notice they're in de decreasing priority, 987. So they'll appear from the top down. And the add action has a little link to the image and some text after it. Okay, so next we have... So we now have the state that's being passed from the script. So if someone clicks on play, the state will now have the word play in it, that variable, local variable. So now if someone keeps clicking on the, on the play button, it needs to stop them sort of like restarting the script every single time. So in this case, if, if a state is already play and the Duke state, the public, public state is play, then exit the script. So in other words, it stops people from constantly clicking on play. If it's playing, it's playing. Uh, and it deletes the virtual player if it exists, sets the duke state to off, and public variables that. Now it uses duke state to ensure that all the people across the, that are playing on the game, they all have the same duke state set on their machine. And it sleeps for one second. So then what it does is it takes the state that was passed from the script and it puts that into duke state and then public variables that so now it's updated so now someone's clicked next for example or play so it puts play into the state states then copied into duke state and then it's sent across the network so everyone knows that someone's just clicked play so now in the instance that you click play It checks to see where the current index is a non-existent variable. And if it is, then current index is allocated the value of zero. And then it runs a loop. And it says uh, for i from the current index value to the number of tunes minus one. The reason it's number of tunes minus one, they're ten tunes. So the number of tunes minus one is obviously nine. The reason it's that that we use that is because it's a zero-based index. So we start at zero and we go up to nine. So that's your ten songs. And it checks and then it puts the updates the current index because this is now playing songs and starts off with, for example, let's say it was zero. Current index would then get the value zero put into it, and it would send that current index value across the network, and everyone would know that current index value is zero. And it says, uh, if the virtual player doesn't exist, then create the virtual player. And then it attaches the virtual player to the jukebox. And the reason it does that is because if you don't attach the virtual player, in this case, we're using a, an object called land helipad empty. It's an invisible helipad, but it's quite big. And if you attach that to, if you don't attach it to the jukebox, you'll find the sound center of the sound or the origin of the sound in 3d space will sort of come from about three meters to the to the left of the object if you're looking at it so um so by attaching it you'll get the origin like right in the center of that object so you'll localize the sound better next selected is tunes to play select i so it looks at the tunes to play there's an array of 10 songs it selects the value i from tunes to play and puts that into next selected so in other words it's next selected is the actual song that's going to be played just now then the object virtual player 2 and the sound that's going to be played are remote exec uh, say 3d is remote exec sent across the network to all the machines on the network so they all start playing that song and they will hear the song coming from the virtual player 2 
then sends a message to the screen now playing and that's a little line break in a hint and then that's a placeholder percent one and that picks up the first first variable so it's essentially concatenating uh, text it pulls this value which is the name of the song and it puts it into this text into the string and it puts a line break in it and puts it on the screen so now it's got to wait for the end of the song. You can't use sleep in this instance because you need to be able to break at any moment this loop. The only way to do that is to use wait until because this is on, on a per frame basis as far as I know. So now we need to see, okay, so how long do we need to wait? So time is the current mission time, elapsed time in the mission. Max song length we had in the beginning, which was 61 seconds. So it adds, so it adds 61 seconds to the time, to the mission time, and puts that into a variable called song n, a local variable. So it's in, and then it says wait until the current mission time is greater than the time that we've stored, or, in this case, the virtual player doesn't exist, or it, the duke state's not equal to play. In other words, someone's clicked on next or off. Or they've deleted the virtual player because they clicked off and the virtual player is there. So this is a, like multiple double checks here. But it's critical that this happens because we need to break it instantly. If we leave it running with a sleep, you could have multiple sounds playing over the top of each other. So then uh, after this wait until period, it's going to go back into the second loop. But before it does that, it does it checks to see if the virtual player is null. In other words, it doesn't exist. And if it doesn't exist, then it knows, well, someone's obviously clicked uh, next or they've clicked off or something, but something's, something's deleted this object. So it then exits this loop and it exits with state equals off and duke state equals off. So it then makes sure that the local state is off and the public state is off public variables the state to off so everyone on the network is aware that that the state is of the jukes the jukebox player is off sleeps for a second and if none of these conditions once it's waited for this and it didn't exit the script once it exits after the wait loop and this doesn't kill the the loop it will then carry on back and it will play through the rest of the songs however if someone clicked next then the duke state will be updated and um, it then checks to see whether or not the virtual player exists. And if it does, it deletes the virtual player. It then adds, checks to see what the current index is and makes sure that it doesn't pass. If we click next and we're on the last song, that it doesn't go on to a non-existent index value because it's going to throw an error. So it says if the current index plus one is equal to the number of tunes, meaning 10, then the next index has to be zero. Otherwise, the next index will be current index plus one. Then we have next selected will be tunes to play, select the next index. Sleep for a second, so it finds the next tune to play and puts it into next selected. It then updates the current index with the next index and public variables that. And then it checks to see whether the virtual player doesn't exist. And if it doesn't exist, then the virtual player is created again. You'll see there's uh, quite a number of double checks in here because it's so critical. Then the virtual player is then attached to the jukebox and the, the sound next selected is played on the virtual player 2 and remote exec across the network um, and, use, and played through say 3D. And it plays a little, I post a little message to the screen now playing, as I said earlier, now playing the song. It then does exactly what it did before. It waits for the current mission time to exceed the time of the previous mission time plus the length of the song and or if the virtual player has been deleted or the juke state's not equal to next. Otherwise uh, in the event that someone has clicked off it will exit the it will exit the script and delete, delete uh, the virtual player and public variable the duke state meaning off to all of the clients on the network. Now the duke, if duke state equals next, this will only play a single song. It will just wait to the end of the song and then it will exit. 
All right, so that's basically how it works. And um, if there's any questions or any, any suggestions on how it can be improved, uh, please let me know. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. And uh, see you next time.